Like so many organizations, the organization of Avedum, that word Avedum started with a tragedy. In 2003, at Cocalico High School, on one November day, a young boy, a 15 year old, left school, and a couple hours after he left school, that young boy with so much to live for had taken his life. I was Phil's very last classroom teacher. In fact, on that November day, I remember standing at my classroom door, talking to some of the students, and I remember talking to Phil. What are you gonna do this weekend, Phil? I asked him, and that 15-year-old looked me straight in the eyes, and he said what most teens would say when you ask him that question. I don't know, Mr. Globus. The bell rang, and Phil left. The truth is, Phil knew exactly what he was going to do. His note had already been written. He simply had to finish his school day. A death, a death in any school disrupts it. A suicide? Here Phil was laughing a couple days ago. How does something like this happen? We have great counselors at Cocalico High School, and the counselors really went into overdrive to help the school begin to heal. A couple months after Phil's death, as students were starting to appear to get back to normal, I had two students, Lauren Baxter, who was a ninth grader, and Ashley Smith, who was a tenth grader, both of whom had lost family members to suicide. They wrote essays in my class, and they both basically said the same thing. People die by suicide, and we don't talk about it. And then more people die, and then we don't talk about it. So I called the students, I was concerned, I called them, I called them aside and went down to counseling and I said, well, what do we need to do? And they said, Mr. Lopez, we have to do something. I said, okay, what do you want to do? And Lauren looked at me the way a ninth grader would and said, we got to start a club, Mr. Lopez. Oh, we got to start a club. So I went to Mr. Davies, who was the principal at the time, and I said, Dave, I said, we got to do something. He goes, what are we going to do? I said, we got to start a club, Dave. And he looked and said, too, anybody outside this school they're going to think we're starting a suicide club. You can't talk about suicide in schools. No, that, that Dave was playing devil's advocate a little bit. He goes, go talk to our counselors, go talk to some experts, see what we can do. And you know what we discovered? We discovered, I discovered, that suicide is the third leading cause of death among our school-age kids. The third leading cause of death. And yet, in almost every single instance, in almost every instance, that death can be prevented. Just think about that for a second. Third leading cause of death, and yet it can almost always be prevented. And yet we don't talk about it in schools. There's something wrong with that. And we went on a little mission. We formed a club. The club was called AHH, A Helping Hand. And its sole purpose was very simple. We wanted everybody to know that depression was an illness. We wanted everybody to know the warning signs. And we wanted everybody to know where they can go in their schools and their communities to get help. I hope that every single person in this room right now realizes that depression is an illness. It's not something that you can just smile away. Just go be happy, you'll feel better. If you really have depression, you would never tell someone with a broken arm, just swing it around a little bit, it'll get better, you're fine. But yeah, with depression, we somehow think something is different. So we got this message out. A couple years into our program, a young lady, Jacqueline Anderson, she was 16, and she said, Mr. B, Mr. Velopas, AHH is not cool. Now, I thought I knew what cool was, but I said, what do you mean it's not cool? She says, it's a dumb name. Ah, it doesn't make any sense. I said, fine, Jacqueline. Go home tonight and make up a word. In fact, I want a word that one teenager can say to another teenager in a crowded room that means, I care for you. I'm here for you. Jacqueline went home. The very next day, she comes in with this word. Avidum, A-E-V-I-D-U-M. What is this? She goes, it means I've got your back. I totally made it up. <laughs> I looked online. She was not lying. She totally made up this word. I'm like, we got our own word. This is unreal. And any of my students would, would tell you, I get, I get excitable very quickly. And I'm like, you know, I'm telling everyone, we got our own word. This is going to be huge. You know, so we had our word. We renamed the club HH became Avidum. And then what happened, we started taking our message to other schools. We went to Ephrata, we went to Hemfield. Other schools started listening to what our students were saying. And we ended up winning, listen to this, this is from Little Old Cucalico. 
We ended up winning a national award. It was called the SAD, Students Against Destructive Decisions, National Activity Day Award. 10,000 schools across the nation have that organization. Cocalico won the top award. We went to Washington, D.C., the Surgeon General, the Student Center. We went to Washington, D.C., the Surgeon General of the U.S. gave our students the plaque. That night, we were driving the school van home. Mr. Buck, um, the TV teacher, and I were driving the van back. And that's when we realized something. How did we just win a national award? For telling people that depression is an illness? Could you imagine any other illness? Imagine if we had this great idea. We want to tell everybody that cancer is an illness. Here are the warning signs of cancer. And here's where you go to get help. We wouldn't even get a paragraph in the new era. Yet we're getting national awards for doing what should be minimal stuff. So we said, fine. If you're going to give me the national stage, we're going to take it. And what we did then was we reached out to some local people, Representative Crichton, Senator Brubaker. We reached out to the people in our communities who could help us. I have to tell you, it was incredible. The second I sat down with, Mr. with Senator Brubaker and I said, we need to do something with this work, he immediately, immediately reached out to people in Lancaster County. We assembled a meeting. I spoke. I did the same thing here. And by the end, I had a law firm, Barley Snyder, offered its full resources free to protect our word, we had a board of directors and suddenly our little word was something grand. And what we did over the years, we kept getting bigger and bigger. We spoke at national stages. We were all over the East Coast. We made it to Good Morning America. Good Morning America, Robin Roberts held up that shirt that said Avidum. I have to tell you, it was so surreal. We went in the summer to take Good Morning America. They aired it the first week of school. I was standing in my classroom and I'm watching Good Morning America, and I'm watching our student, Maggie Carden. Maggie held up that shirt that said Avino, and something really strange just hit me. I looked at the classroom, and my students, my students were there, and I said, you know, this started right here in this classroom, this work. So often, and if you would ask our students who are sitting here, so often, students feel like people don't listen to them. Did you ever feel that? This is a group that people listen to, I hope. Right? But students feel that sometimes. A Vedum shows you that they will listen. Because that's what a Vedum does. A Vedum uses the gifts and talents of our students, of our young people. And they find creative ways to get messages out to people. We didn't stop at Good Morning America. Last year we spoke at the, the biggest conference in the nation for suicide prevention. Following that conference, I was in my classroom. I get a phone call from Joan Ross, the secretary. She calls me and she says, Joe, you have to take this phone call. I don't know if it's a joke or not. I pick up the phone. It's Senator Harry Reid's office from Washington, D.C. The Senate Majority Leader of the U.S. would like to meet with some of your students at the U.S. Capitol. This is unbelievable. We went to Washington, D.C. And we met with the Senate Majority Leader. And he talked about suicide prevention across this country. And he talked specifically about what was happening at Cocalico High School in Lancaster, PA. That's pretty incredible stuff. So after that meeting, after we came back, we realized that we have something special. And this is what a Beatle is right now. I realized that it was very difficult to teach and to also do things with a Beatle. So I met with, with uh, Mr. Irvine. I met with Dr. Sensenay superintendent, and I said, I need a little bit of help. I need to take, this happened over time, but I need to get a year, one year off of school, to take this word and to talk to whomever is going to listen. An unpaid leave from Cocalico School District, so it wouldn't cost the community anything. I found an organization out of Ardmore called Minding Your Mind, and they paid my salary, for, they're paying my salary for one year to take this word far and wide. It's a word that started here, and that word is going to be common, common vocabulary for students and adults across this nation. And it started right here. So I think that's something to be proud of. So you give them a round of applause. That, that's for our students. So what Avidum does now, it's not just talking about suicide. It's not just talking about depression. What it's talking about is what does it mean to be there for somebody? What does it mean to, quote, have your friends back? What does it mean to be a friend? And we are forming, as we go now across the state and the nation, we are forming a vital communities where we're trying to create a culture of kindness, a culture of I care for you in schools across this nation. And schools are going for it every single time I walk into a school. We have an elementary school in the Hemfield School District 
that just started. They're teaching their kindergartners and first graders the word Abinam. That's amazing. I received a letter from a first grader that said, Dear sir, Abinam means being a friend. And then she started talking about all the things she could do as a friend. You could jump rope with her friends, and you could do this and this and this and this. And how incredible is that? A first grader knows that word. Imagine when that, that young lady grows up and goes through those tough middle school years and those high school years. It's pretty cool to know that she has a word, a word that's made up, created by other students. So that's what I've been spending my time. Today, I was in the Poconos. Today, I was in a school introducing it. In fact, over the past six months, I have been all over the state of Pennsylvania. I have been all over the East Coast. And here's what I've discovered. Whether I am in a prestigious boarding school in Massachusetts, we went to the Milton Academy, one of the most prestigious schools in the nation when it comes to, to boarding schools. Or a week later, I'm in inner city Philly and I'm walking into this school thinking, wow, is this school even functioning? It doesn't matter where you are though. What I find is this, administrators, administrators are exhausted. Educators, educators are so beaten up. They're so tired. And our students and our families are hurting. And they're hurting terribly so. We have a society today. And I said this, but I actually need some help with the students. We have, we have society today where we have excess. You name it, we have it, and we have it in bulk. Our students also have access. They have access to all those excesses that are out there. And what does that lead to? A mess. A mess. A mess. Thank you. Excess, access equals a mess. I didn't know what that last word was, so they just supplied that word. Thank you. But it's true. So what are we going to do about it? How, how is it today that with all the resources that we have, every single school I walk into, they're just exhausted. I spend my days talking to teachers, trying to lift up teachers, trying to show them what we need to do. Because the truth is, if you take these children, you take these students, and if you believe in these students, if you look them in the eyes and truly believe in their gifts and talents, they will be superstars, all of them. They just need to find that they matter, that they're needed. And that's all that a Vietnam does, is it looks that teenager in the eye, it looks that child in the eye and says, you know what, you are important. And if every single teacher across this nation stood at their door and greeted kids when they walked in, looked them in the eyes and said that, I am glad you are here today. You matter to me. If everybody did that, we'd change this world. That alone. So guess what a Beatum does in a school? It requires, we want, we expect our teachers in an Beatum school to start looking into the eyes of those children, to start believing in those children. You can't say it anymore, oh, my job's only teaching math. No, it isn't. Your job's teaching that whole child. Because if that child isn't healthy, you're not teaching that child anything. So for the teachers, that's very clear. I need administrators across this nation who are visionaries, who are not scared to do something like this. Because guess what? The public cares a lot about those numbers they throw in the paper. I'm sure a lot of you look at that. Oh, where does my school rate with this and that? All that stuff may be fine and dandy. But we also need to teach these whole children. We need to teach these children and kind of inspire them to be the greatness that they can be. But here's the expectation for the communities. We need community help. And that's what Abedum can do, and that's what Rod has done very successfully. And when he reached out to me with Abedum and said, could we somehow connect these two? He has students at Cucalico, students who are interested, and we can connect it. I thought it was brilliant. Because here's the secret. I've been talking about Abedum for a lot of years, and not everybody really gets. Abedum simply is love. That's what Abedum is. So I, we've created a word where we have students running around saying, Abedum, we have football teams leaving the huddle. Abedum, we have them in the back of football helmets. Girls lacrosse Lancaster County wide. They have, all have Abedum shirts, right? That's love every time I see that word. So if we can actually create a culture like that in every single school, and we duplicate it school by school by school by school, it's gonna be incredible as we go across this nation. So I stand here really excited tonight. I stand here knowing that we have a community, that we have an organization, that Rod is leading an organization that truly, truly is a Vedum. And that's what I would hope for every single one of us, that we can live that, that we can put that word out there, that we can make that word part of our vocabulary. For the parents in the room, go home tonight, Look your children in the eyes and really listen. Our kids need to be heard. Believe me, I'm telling you that I have to be reminded to do the same thing. And I think all of us in our communities have to look at the youth, look at the young people. What do they need? 
That's all a Vedum does. And if you have a, a company, an organization that has something, some kind of resource, help provide it for the students to do that. You know, regardless of what, where you are, there's a, kids, a lot of kids with a lot of needs out there. Let's try to connect and see what, the, what we can do with that. There's a couple things I want to say in closing. Um, I really hope that we can be role models for our youth. And I really try. When, I'm, when I was in my classroom and I have some of my former students here, I try, the person that you see right here on this stage is the person my students see in my classroom. Is that correct? Right? This is who I am. This is me. I'm not a hypocrite. This is who I am. And I stand before you like this. I hope all of us can try to live that type of life. To be those role models for our children. Not just say it. Act it. So our actions are there. I can't say I believe in these children and then turn my back and then say, oh yeah, go ahead kid. No. Here, what are we going to do? Let's go do something grand. Let's go do something great. I, got, I used to write a, a relationship column in the New Era for many, many years. I wrote about family. Um, and I received this, this letter to me. And actually, my son texted it to me because I forgot to bring it. Um, so if I can read this to you. My grandfather, for many, many years, was um, owned and operated a peanut and dry cleaning stand on the main street in Ephrata. Um, does anyone remember that, by the way? Okay, that's a bunch of young people remembering that, thank you. Um, he, he later then was in Lancaster County. He, he was in Lancaster City um, towards the end of his retirement. But he spent something like 60 years in, in Lancaster, in, in, in Ephrata. And I received this letter in 2007. My grandfather had since passed. My grandfather lived to be 99, um, but he had since passed. But I got this letter after I had written about my grandfather. It says, Dear Joe, once again, you made a brief reference to your grandfather, the peanut man at Ephrata. I can still see his peanut shop as if it was yesterday. I am 85 now, and remember what he did for me when I was in my teens. He was a kind man. I was in Lancaster, having taken the trolley from Ephrata to Lancaster. I got on at Akron. When I was about to leave and was ready to board the trolley back, I discovered that I had lost my change purse, which had all my money in it. He saw that I had a problem. He approached me and then he said, I pay your way. And he reached into his pocket and he paid my way. I never ever will forget the kindness of this man for as long as I live. This woman was 85 years old when she wrote this. It happened 70 years before. My grandfather reached into his pocket. I have no idea what the trolley cost back then. Does anyone know? I mean, are we talking pennies? A couple cents? But he reached into his pocket and he gave a teenager who was in need a couple pennies. And 70 years later, this woman is writing to that person's grand's grandson to say, thank you. you know, that's what a Vedum is. A Vedum is that person who's going to help that person. But a Vedum is also that person that's going to say, thank you for doing that. And if we can do those simple things, if we can exhibit a Vedum wherever we go and use that for our children, you know, sometimes I get that feeling like, wow, what's going on in this society? You start to feel that sense of hopelessness. You start to feel that, man, I'm so scared for these kids today, and I am scared for these children. But I get filled with hope when I realize that if enough of us surrounded the young people in this room and just gave them whatever they needed to be the people they can be, if we can do that and all commit to that, it's going to be a pretty, pretty incredible place for these children as they grow up and then they pass it on. So on behalf of Avita, on behalf of the thousands of students now, we're, we're going to be in at least 60 schools across the state of Pennsylvania, and we're going to be in a lot more as this thing starts to take off. But on, on behalf of all of those students, I thank each and every one of you for inviting me on this stage. Rod, I thank you for what you do. You do tremendous stuff, tremendous work. And most important, I want to thank the students who are here, the, represent, the representatives, the students who are actually living that and taking that in our schools. Because without what you do, I would not be standing up here at all. So I thank all of you and Avila.
Thanks, Joe. I, I really appreciate uh, everything that you stood up here and said. Um, I'm supposed to start the video and turn over a rod here, but I just have to say something to you guys. You know, I went to high school. I was in ninth grade with Phil Carden when that happened. I was in school with these kids when they started this. So for us to stand here, and I'm 24 years old now, and to know that we've gone so far with this, when it first started and I was in high school, I, it didn't make sense to me. I was like, why are we talking about this? Why, why is this so relevant? And it wasn't until I realized that these kids, they think that an F on their report card is the end of their life and that they should just end their life because they disappointed their parents in some way. And they, they've lived for 15 years and that's the worst thing that happened to them in 15 years and they have 50 more years to go and they're going to end their life because of something like that. And that just, it breaks my heart. Um, so when Rod asked me to, uh, to join the board, it really hit me hard because these were the kids I went to high school with. I went to school with Ashley Smith who, who really started this and, and took it to the next level. I went to school with these kids and to know that eight years later or, or whatever, I'm standing here knowing that the senator knows about us, that Washington DC knows about us. It really like hits me hard. And uh, you know, these are the kids that my son who's nine months old are gonna grow up and they're gonna be the businessmen in the community when he's growing up. And if we can save five kids a year that didn't think they had a future and can take them to the next level, I think that's just a huge success, I, I really do. And uh, so I really want to thank everyone for taking the time to come here tonight. Um, I know that some of you didn't know what this was all about, and I know that some of you, you know, maybe don't have a personal uh, connection with, with a student who killed himself or anything, but it really is a devastating thing, and, and it really is horrible to show up to school on Monday and to know that that kid, you played soccer with him on Friday, you did whatever, and, he didn't show up on Monday and his locker is covered in flowers and streamers and you know and, and it was just the worst thing ever um, to, to walk through the hallways for that next two weeks. It was like it, it was just horrible and, and every the whole school was depressed and it's happening more and more and more and it, it's just seeming that you know just last year we had how many kids kill, kill themselves because you know they got their girlfriend pregnant or they couldn't uh, they couldn't tell their parents something if you can't go to your parents and tell them what's going on in your life and and for them to support you no matter what who can you really turn to and that's what uh, i'm choking up standing up here and i don't normally do that but you know that's who you're supposed to be able to turn to in life is your parents and your parents are supposed to make, be able to make it all okay, and if you don't tell them and you take your life, you just ruined your family's life and not just your own. If you're not just taking your own life, there's a ripple effect to that. Phil's sister, uh, Meg, you know, going through school, and, and she's got to come up through school knowing that all the seniors know that her brother killed himself while they were freshmen, and they're looking at her like, you know, what do we say to you? And that's, it's just horrible. So I apologize for rambling, but I, I just felt like I had to say that. And uh, 